up next are five secret tips to successfully set up a new aquarium. When it's just you, well, times can be tough. When there's no one there to All right, so you're a beginner in the aquarium hobby. Congratulations and welcome to the family. We are all one big family here. We all love aquariums and we all love fish. So you need to know what you need to do to set up your tank as a beginner with these top five secrets. Beginner secret number one is get the kit. You're saying the kit? What kit? When you go to the pet store, Petco, PetSmart, or your local fish store, they usually have kits where you can buy the stand, the aquarium, the heater, the light, the tank, the filter, everything you need in a basic kit. So all you really need to get is water decor and a fish. So get the kit because it's going to cost you less in the long run. Unless, of course, you already have a whole bunch of stuff at home and all you really need is the tank, then just get the tank. But I'm thinking that you probably don't, so get the kit. Beginner secret number two, and that is test strips. That's right, get test strips or get the master test kit. Either or, but you need to test your water. You need your base water test from your faucet, and you need to be able to test your water as you're going along in the hobby. Every now and then, you're going to want to test it to make sure that your balance, your numbers are all where they need to be. So get test strips or get a master test kit. Beginner secret number three, and that is dechlorinate. Dechlorinate, 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 dechlorinate. That's right, you need to dechlorinate even if you don't have chlorine in your water. Dechlorinate, because it could be chloramines. Chloramines don't gas off, whereas chlorine does. So, dechlorinate and do it after you've put the water in the tank. That's right, you need to dechlorinate the whole amount of water. If you just dump in the amount for the tank and then fill the tank up, you're not dechlorinating all that water. You're dechlorinating everything at the bottom. So dechlorinate after you fill the tank, please. Step number four, and that is let it sit. Once you've got your tank set up, you've got your, all the things are plugged in, your heater, your filter, your light, you got it all ready to go, you put your decorations in, you got your spump bob, and you got your, you got your whatever, you got your plants, you got your rocks, you got your logs, whatever it is that you do to decorate your tank. Everything's set up. Put your water in and turn it on. Do not put a fish in it. You're going to need to let it cycle. The tank needs to develop what's called beneficial bacteria so that when you put your fish into that tank, there's going to be something in there that will eat its, its pee and its poo, to be honest. So, you need your beneficial bacteria, and it's going to take a couple weeks for you to do that. So, what you do is you set it all up, and you just let it run. It's going to develop beneficial bacteria on every surface inside that tank, including your filter. Just let it run, relax, and enjoy it for what it is right now, a pretty box full of water with nice plants and rocks. Beginner secret number five is research your fish. That's right, you need to research your fish to make sure that they get along with each other, that they don't eat plants, that they don't eat each other, that they're from the same general region. In most cases, you can mix some fish but that are not from the same region, but in the most cases, it's best to keep them in the same region because then they're generally going to be compatible. Now, that's a very general statement. Because this guy right here, he's from a region where there's lots of different kinds of fish. But he's not compatible with nobody. He's a red devil. And he's only this big when I bought him. And he was beautiful and cute and adorable. And now, he's a foot long. So make sure you research your fish. You need to know where they're from, what the temperature range is, their preferred pH, how big they get, and whether or not they're omnivores or carnivores. That's right, there are fish out there that are just carnivores. And I'm not just talking about the ones with teeth like piranha. Oscars are carnivores, 
they're actually they're omnivores. But there's vegetarians, there's omnivores, and there's carnivores in the fish world, just like there is in every other environment that we can think of. So please research your fish. Now I hope this video was helpful to you. If it was, you might want to check out this video. And if you liked that one, you'll probably like this one. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell so that you will be notified when a new video comes out. And just remember, guys and gals, we're feeding the addiction one take at a time through education and inspiration. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye now.